very short 10-minute webinar for the electrical end of things. My name's Lisa Hughes. I'm a math coach at Reading Muhlenberg Career and Technology Center, and um, I'm going to share with you some interesting math things that we do here. Um, I know electrical guys, if you're going to be listening to this, I didn't get any math lessons from you. I'm hoping that if nothing else, you could send me a couple of your five um, small problems that we can at least get some great problems to send out to submit. Um, I do have enough to talk about here um, from what we've done here. And um, Chad Hefner, who is our electrical teacher, who is also on, has, has done some great things. And I have some things to share with that. So um, we'll, we'll go on and we'll let you know the requirements at the end of this. And um, hopefully, you'll gain some information from this as well. So um, what I'm going to show you mostly is, is things we've done here. Um, things that I've done in the past and things that that are out there and that uh, Chad has done here as well. Um, the one thing that we look at here, and I know you do in electrical, um, are the transformers and the primary and secondary. And some of the activities we have, I don't know if you have smart board, so I don't hear tons of things on smart board. But if you do, I do have some things we do in smart board here. If you notice, there's um, some vocabulary and some words as far as ratios and proportions, because really primary and secondary transformer um, works on that basis. The other thing I have on this screen is if you notice, there's um, the primary and secondary, the coils in the middle, and then there's colored blocks on the outside. That runs. What you can do is you can put that up on your screen. It's a PowerPoint. And when you hit it, it, it forces the middle is the question. And the A, B, C, and the D that you can't see are the answers. And students can either um, use whiteboards and put up their answer, or if, they, if you have them going to the sides of the room, you could have them all walk to the sides of the room to look at ratios and proportions. And there's not only that one, there's quite a few in for that actual activity. And like I've said in all the other webinars, these all will be online for you somewhere along the line, either in the toolbox that Meter is um, currently constructing, or um, we can get them to you. You will have access to all the full activities of these. Um, OK, the next thing um, I've done, and this was a while ago that I've done this, is it's a poster project. And you know, it, it's funny how an electrical is not necessarily an all-male dominated area. And actually, um, my husband's in, in electrical, and he actually says that um, girls in this area actually do pretty well because they're very um, meticulous and they're much better with their hands because they're smaller. So um, encouraging girls to do this is good. We do have some girls in our program here as well. Um, but this is some a project. It's a poster project. And what, what um, we did was it was a series in parallel circuit, and we had each group of students create a series in parallel circuit on a big poster board. And they could color it. It's pretty amazing what you get when you allow boys to be creative. Um, series in parallel circuits. And what I did was I had them write a math problem related to the actual drawing that they came up. And they needed to also write down two facts about a series in parallel circuit on their drawing. And then what we did was we used a literacy strategy, which is like a gallery walk. Um, if you notice on this page, there's a, a parallel and a series. They had the problem, they had the answer. This went on the back of their board. And then there was a worksheet for each group to go around to the different boards as we hung them up. And they could actually put the board number and the problem and the solution and um, solve actual other problems of other people in the area. And it was cool. Sometimes even with these, you can not only do posters, but you can actually use uh, food and, and licorice and things to create these circuits just as a fun activity um, to do. Um, here's the grading rubric, which I used for it. Um, I did do creativity, a work ethic, uh, problems that were completed, the drawings and the facts were completed, the gallery walk did, did all. You know, when I when we do posters and projects like this, I incorporate everything in, you know, yeah, you can maybe do the drawing, but did you do the problem? Did you put the items where they were supposed to be put? 
did your group do the gallery walk or did you mess around when you were supposed to be doing this? So there's basis for everything on the rubrics. Um, and it gives students the opportunity, if they don't do quite so well on the one, um, you can make up the difference a lot on the other one. Um, another thing that I do a lot of is um, the looking at charts and graphs. Um, one thing on the side of this poster is a bar graph fact sheet. And it, it kind of shows the graphs. Uh, it shows how different workings of graphs work. And then if you notice, there's a, your mission at the bottom. Um, it's great uh, to take program-related information like electrician salary. And I got this. This is probably a, a year old, but I got this on ONET, which is valid information for all your electricians to use. And um, you can create a bar chart using this information. Now, you, have, you don't have to do it as posters. You don't have to do it as big things. Use graph paper. Because I'm going to tell you, the other thing is you can use white paper and have them just create it on a plain white paper. But another thing students don't get enough practice on are using grid paper and knowing how when you see a grid and when you see the X and Y and, and everything, how that relates to to where you're drawing and how your numbers fall. And you just can't draw a bar to any level or any height. You have to make sure they're labeled and get them to label their x and y axis and things like that. Because those are all points on SATs and on any of the keystones, especially keystone algebra, where a lot of graphing takes place, that students lose easy points on because they're not sure. And you have the ability to reinforce that. Um, Another thing that I do, and, and I'm going to tell you, um, since these books, code books do change, this may not be 100% accurate. You're welcome to use it if it works. But one thing we found in electrical is um, the students are allowed to use their code books on their NOCTI exam. And um, they don't know where to find things. So what's really a neat thing, and, and these code books, and again, Mathematics is not only doing the math, it's logical thinking. And it's reading things. If you notice on number two, I have a table number, just looking numbers and service ratings. You know, all of these are words that are mathematical and also are necessary to be able to complete the activities in many things. Um, if you notice number five, a load is not less than. Again, math terms, but they're all program related. And what um, I know Mr. Hefner does is they do go through the book. Um, and uh, actually, one of the students this year, which I thought was very good, came to me and said, you know, it would help if we, um, if we could uh, put little tabs in the book when we find things, because it would help us on our knockies when we have to find things in the book to go to that specific section. So there's a lot of good that comes from learning the code books. Again, I'm not sure how many of you have. Smartboard, but um, in Smartboard, I created this little activity where you can actually move all the the circuits and the resistors and and, and things like that, and and label the parts, and you can move these around. So you could actually go on Smartboard and have a student create his his or her own actual circuit based on um, the amps and the the current and the resistance. So um, that again, you can have that, and you can use that. Um, all the lines are together, but you can pull them separately and create big ones or small circuits, parallel versus series, different things that you can use. And again, that's all math related. It really is. Um, here's an example of the T-charts. And what I'm going to uh, show you um, is something I created with the T-chart. This is an actual, this is a T-chart based on irregular shapes. If you see down where there's lots of irregular shapes. And this one is an electrical task, calculating lighting loads for a single family dwelling. And some of these are, are might be a little difficult, especially for students to understand. But what I did was I created, based on this, I created an entire um, PowerPoint presentation on this T-chart alone. And the way I start with this is, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this. It's a little different. It's um, it's organized. What you do is you cut these sections apart, and you give each student a section of this. And this is all 
you can buy them for mathematics. You can buy them out in the shops about um, going forward and seeing things, but you can't buy anything that's actually program related for our program. So I created one based on um, some of the information in this T-chart as well as some of the information you need as an electrician. Um, so what they would do is you'd give each student one of these rectangular sections, and there's more than this. There's like three pages of them. And they have to, if you notice the one says start, the person says start, and then he reads the red, and the red has to match a black. Um, so the area of a rectangle is area equals, and you notice this one's in line, it says length times width, but when you hand them out in the class, students have to think about what they're talking about and figure out which one's next. So I have a whole thing based on this and based on the electrician um, doing this, and again, um, I go through an example about um, amps and wiring and, and square footage, um, go through it very quickly, and I'm just going to email, and like again, I don't have the whole thing on here. Um, then I do a think pair share where I do both of them. Um, we talk about houses. If you look, this is a ranch home, well what's a ranch home? What, what would that have to do differently? than a two-story home, and it would, you know, based on how you're running electric at, the, at some point in time. So we do a think-pair-share, which is a literacy strategy, and, and then we work through a problem. Um, now realizing that you look at this and you say, well, I probably am never going to have a house like this, but you're correct, a normal, an average person will not, but, you know, there's always that possibility um, of being asked to do something extreme. Look at all the shows on TV now. You never know if you're going to be that person that shows up on those shows. I tell, sometimes I go into programs and I say, you're going to be designing um, a home for Beyonce. And they're like, yeah, right. And I said, somebody has to do that. And if you're the best out there, it could be you someday. So, you know, be, be ready for some of the things like that. Um, another program um, which I created is the program for Ohm's Law. And again, same thing, ratio and proportion. Here are some common core concepts that, you know, I throw that common core out there just so they can see it and, and just do one very quick problem that looks like a common core, but you're really, what you're looking at is you're actually looking at solving this. And if you throw one problem in there, you don't lose them for that five seconds and now you're showing them this problem which is the same type of setup, and hopefully when they have to go back to homeschool, they can see this better because you've got the ability to show them what it really looks like in your program. Um, I created, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't say I created these. These I got offline. They're little cards. You can download them, print them on cardstock, and it has all the formulas you need for them. Another thing you all look at in your area is the, the scale factor the architect scale, the engineer scale, and again, um, this is a very easy PowerPoint that's created to actually show you how to do the scale drawings and how to use things to measure. Um, again, there's another thing you can print out and put on cards, which is your, your series and your, um, your resistor colors. Um, the other thing that um, Chad and I did together, and he's pretty much done, and he created a lot on his own, are um, he uses the book called An Ugly Book, which is a really very cool electrical book. They're not that expensive. I think he buys them for his class. They're about 10 bucks a piece. And they have a lot of different math formulas, a lot of different um, uh, requirements for electricians. Um, so sometimes we look at the ugly book and, and we force them to actually do problems based on that book because that's something they may take out to a job site and need to find things quick. So we have a lot of these math problems. In fact, there are 102 of these um, in PowerPoint form where we have the actual um, pictures or like this one's an actual question and then the answers to follow. Um, again, they're out, they'll be out there for you. They're, I, like I said, between uh, Chad and I, we've created about 102 of these. And he actually may even have more at this point because uh, the goal we have is we work with them for a while and then they go do their own thing and, and he has done very well with that. So again, um, pretty much just some activities very quickly to show you. 
And this is the end, basically, of our 10 minutes. Um, one thing I want to go over very quickly is the next step after your uh, viewing of the webinar. Um, you did need to uh, see the other one, the Math Mysteries one first, and this one second. And then if you submit a webinar response form, which if you don't have it, you can gladly email Jennifer Grams um, and get one, I'm sure. I don't think it's very difficult from what I've seen. And you can fill it out. There is a new due date. Uh, before the due date was a little closer, it's now May 9th. We do realize that all of you have very busy schedules. And um, I get it, because I'm out there doing it too. And, and pretty much all of our teachers, between NOCTI and graduation and um, getting their programs together for new students, which we have tomorrow night, um, it is a busy time of year. So uh, please turn that in. It does get you Act 48 credits, which are great, and they look great on, you know, just having them because they are required at this point again. So if you have any questions, uh, please contact Jennifer. Um, I am throwing in a thank you to Chad Hefner because um, at our school because he helped create a lot of these things with me. Um, if you have any questions, our all of our emails are down at the bottom. Please feel free to email any of us. Have a great day.